Hi, I'm Doug. I make Canadian personal finance videos and review videos here on YouTube. This is one of my updates for November 2022. Uh, I've been doing this tax-free savings account in Well Simple Trade, a self-directed account since May 2020. Let's look at the the chart of all time here to see at the beginning there I put about five thousand dollars in back in May 2020 and right now that five thousand has turned into forty six thousand four hundred and seventy nine dollars and twenty two cents I have contributed about thirty eight thousand uh, we're up about twenty two percent eight thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and if we look over the last week we're down a thousand dollars two percent over the last month down one percent and over the last day it's december 8th 2022 by the way uh we're up 25 dollars zero percent so as i mentioned i started this at the beginning of the pandemic back in early 2020 i am no expert at all before i just had mutual funds i realized i was kind of losing some money on the management expenses and also it just it wasn't growing at the pace that i wanted i thought i could do better so I started doing it myself and so I'm an amateur, a total beginner and a lot of the stocks that I pick are just by gut feeling and articles that I've read on Yahoo Finance. I'm really no expert so don't take any of this as, as advice and in fact a lot of criticism in the comments lately but I do take it uh, and read it and I try to, to apply it and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the next little bit because some people had some things to say about focusing on finances and financial, you know, stocks and real estate being 50-50. There were also some comments about dividend focused investing and how chasing dividends is not a good idea. I do want to show you though, the total for the month because I am excited about dividends. That's one of the things that I am looking for, high yields. It just is, I, I like I like that. I don't know, a lot of people like chasing companies that are gonna make it big and that they reinvest everything into the growth of the company. In October, we hit a record with over $200, $212.24, and in November, $163.52. Which is pretty good, above 150, but I'd like to see it above 200, and I hope that for 2023, we break that 200 uh, marker every month. But I don't think we'll be there right away. I think it's going to take some time. And you can see the total for the year there is $1,558.52, which is pretty good. So one of the things that was mentioned in my last video in the comments was that I was about 50% financial, 50% real estate. I actually went through and divided up my portfolio by the sectors to show you. And I made this interesting graph here, this pie chart, to show you that 14% is retail, 8% is telecom, 7% manufacturing, 8% oil and gas, 28% financial, and 17% real estate, and 17% in ETFs, which is mixed. It's a, There's a big one, XUS, which is tracking the S&P 500. I do have 0% in tech and 0% in construction and 1% in travel. I think that is Air Canada. And the tech and the construction. So construction is a new one that I've started in investing in. And tech, um, I'm not really a big investor in tech. This one actually represents PKK, which is Tenant Financial Group or FinTech. And uh, that was a, just a big mistake. I lost money on that. Um, good thing I didn't invest more. So I showed you the dividends that were at like $160 this month. I showed you the pie chart. Now let's look at some of the things that were bought in November and so far early December. Based on those comments that I'm mostly financial and mostly uh, real estate, I tried to expand a little bit. Uh, I tried to buy some Bell, obviously that one there expired, but some of the new stocks that I've bought, CCA, that is Kojiko. Um, they are a cable provider. They also do some media production. Now that one was canceled, but this one went through. So five shares there uh, because they do provide home internet uh, and cable services, home phone. And it's a pretty big distributor here in Canada. Uh, it's not as big as Bell and Rogers, but it is one of the larger players. Now, another one in the telecom stream that I put in there is Quebec Corps. Both of these actually are Quebec-based companies. Um, Kojiko, interestingly enough, they have have had some acquisitions in the US. I think one of the companies they bought there is Breeze Lines. They provide internet, fiber, all that kind of stuff in Ohio and maybe New Hampshire or Vermont. I can't quite remember. 
but they had an offer to be bought out by another U.S. company that was really just interested in their U.S. acquisitions, and then they were going to sell the Canadian portion to Rogers. So Kojiko put a stop to that. The family, the Quebec family behind Kojiko did not like that plan at all. Uh, who's to say if it would even be approved in Canada because Rogers and Bell already have this kind of like duopoly on uh, home internet and also cellular telecom stuff. So uh, Kojiko didn't like that. Neither did the premier of Quebec, Francois Legault. And that's another thing that kind of makes me confident with Kojiko is that there's some pride there. And these Quebec companies, they receive some tax breaks, uh, some tax credits and some some help from from the Quebec government and from the Canadian government to, to be doing as well as they are. Now, Quebec Corps is another one. They are really diverse. They don't just do the telecom thing. They own this uh, inter home internet and cellular internet service in Quebec called Videotron, which is pretty huge. Um, the other thing, the other thing about Quebec companies is Quebecers are very proud of their culture and their industries and stuff like that. So they will support their businesses. So there's a big client base that is, is always going to be there. And uh, Videotron is one branch of Quebec Corps. They have many other things, many, I think they own newspapers. They, they, they own a lot of media production too, which is another thing that gets tax credits from, from the government. Now, besides Quebec Corps and Kojiko, talking about construction now, I bought some of this Acon, uh, which is a construction company, and they were just awarded a construction contract for a dam, a hydroelectric dam, I believe, in British Columbia. And before that, they're also working on the Scarborough subway extension in Toronto. Right now, the price is really low uh, compared to what it has been. Uh, just last year, I think it was at $20. Right now, it's at $9.82. And the yield is very good on this one too. It's between seven and 8%. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of faith in that, uh, in that company. Another thing you'll notice here is BTB. And I mentioned this one before, BTB is a real estate investment trust and it's really cheap, $3.77 a share right there on November 29th. And so whenever I find myself with just a few dollars left in the account, I'll buy some BTB. And slowly it's gonna build up over time. Uh, so far in December, I bought some XUS, that's that ETF that tracks the S&P 500, so that one's pretty diversified. Bought some more TNT, uh, just and Scotiabank here, a little bit more Quebec Core and BTB again at the top there. But I do want to talk about TNT for a minute, because I talked a lot about Innovalis before, and I was really happy with that, but then they slashed their dividend, and the stock price took a tumble. I'm not selling the stock right away. I'm going to hang on to that in Avalis, but TNT is another one. It's a real estate investment trust. The yield right now, I'm going to pull it up on uh, Yahoo Finance to show you, is over 10%, which is really high. And I read an article recently that somebody said it's a little bit too high. The reason why someone said it was too high is that in Alberta, uh, in Calgary specifically, where they have some of their offices, that it's a very competitive market now because a lot of people aren't going into the office to work anymore. So companies are not renewing their leases. These companies would rather pay TNT a termination fee and move, and that makes more financial sense for them than continuing to pay TNT and staying where they're at. Um, a lot of companies are downsizing too, so they don't need that huge space anymore. So that was the concern with TNT, but the Ontario and the Quebec market, which is the majority of their business, is still pretty strong. Um, even though people are allowed to work from home for a few days a week, there's a lot of companies that still require people to come into the office. And also it's still very competitive. Um, right before the pandemic, real estate for commercial real estate in Toronto was very hard to come by. It was very expensive and it was a problem for a lot of companies. A lot of the tenants of TNT are public servants. It's the federal government and it's the provincial government and they aren't really moving. I think slower than like the corporate world, government workers aren't allowed to work from home as much as people, as their cor corporate counterparts are. So they're still having to go into the office like more, three days of the week. And I don't think that the government's ready to just give up these properties. Um, the, the government has been selling off uh, some of the properties that they own and they would rather lease. 
So maybe that's a strategy so they can get out of it if they don't need the space anymore, they can get out of it a little quicker. But I really don't think that they're planning on terminating much of their leases. So I still have faith in it. That's why I keep buying a little bit of TNT here and there. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. That's it for this November 2022 update on the portfolio. One more for the year at the end of December. And we're going to see in that last video if we met the goals that we set out for ourselves back at the beginning of the year in January. And uh, I'll see you. I'll see you then. And I'll see you in the new year and hopefully um, a lot more in the new year. We'll get some better some better results. See you then. Bye.